Hi. Today I would like to teach you a few quick methods how to judge a male horoscope. How capable is this male of finding happiness in a relationship and giving happiness to a woman he's in a relationship with? Some people are just, it's rare to see, but some people are just not meant to be in relationship at all. They have so many uh, certain contradictions within themselves. Uh, that uh, they actually, would, however nice and professional and uh, great, talented people they might be, always when it comes to relationship, these men will hurt the woman or hurt themselves. When they get in a relationship, they'll get, they'll become unhappy. They'll not, uh, their worst sides will show up. And in somehow, these people will be painful to be. In, these men, in particular, will be painful to be in relationship. And. Um, Actually, you can, uh, if you want a professional analysis of this and much more precise and specific than what I'm going to give you here, you can order the report, uh, Male uh, Capacity for Happiness in Relationships, which my teacher Ernst Wilhelm has done. And you can, uh, I'll send you a link that you can go through my website and order it, which is just $15. And it includes much more elements than just this. I will teach you now. Uh, a few elements only for determining if a male is capable to be happy in a relationship and if he's a good catch or if you're the male yourself to see what kind of difficulties you have to overcome and what kind of uh, uh, part of your personalities you have to deal with in order to be more settled in relationship and sometimes if you see you need to find more than two or three of these factors sometimes four or five to be really considered undateable you know and to be told not to stay out of dating at all, you know, a really pain personality. But almost every male will have one, sometimes two of these. And, you know, the average is having two. Uh, more than two is already becomes more and more difficult person to be with. And you can see here what the, where the difficulty being with that male will come from. And if you're a male, you can probably identify and learn a bit more about yourself. But I'll be quite short and brief, and I will not give you as much detail as I would like to, because this probably requires a couple of hours of explaining. But uh, if you want the proper, the proper reading, to, uh, because this is just one of the elements I'm going to show you now, not all of the elements for considering if male is dateable and how happy he can be in relationships. And if you remember, we said that for women, uh, the most important planet when it comes to dating was the moon. Uh, and the fourth house, the house of the emotional well-being. For women to be loved, they need to feel appreciated, they need to feel loved, they need to feel emotionally secure and stable if they, they're going to be happy in relationship and make a man happy. If they're not emotionally secure, you know, you have those oh, <laughs> uh, kind of ex going from extremes. For males is the sun. That is the most important one because the sun in the horoscope is uh, basically, it shows consistency. Consistency. It shows, uh, because, you know, like the sun is so consistent. It rises every day. Uh, it's every day there. It every day makes a full circle. Every year is at the same degree, at the same time of the year. This is the most consistent thing we have on Earth. Nothing is as consistent as the rising of the sun. So the sun in the horoscope, in male and female as well, but for the males is much more important, is for them to have consistency. Then they're stable. Because a male who changes his mind all the time, come on, you know, no, not he would, a woman might love him to bits, but he will hurt her all the time. Also, the sun signifies one's uh, identity, individuality, sorry, individuality. And how confident one feels in their individuality, how, set up, how secure they feel on the path they are doing. The, the sun is like very central, you know, how, how secure, how confident, you know, confidence. Confidence and self-esteem, and I'm talking healthy confidence, not the confidence that comes out of compensating because you don't feel adequate enough. Or, uh, and the sun is also one's goals in life. And a male, for male, it's very important to be clear about his goals, what he wants out of life. When he's unclear and inconsist inconsistency comes, lack of confidence comes, you know, and uh, his individuality is not set out close, so he can make a woman very pain. And the other important um, place to look at when we're judging a male horoscope, if he can be happy in relationship or how good he can be in relationship, is the 10th house from the sun, the 10th sign from the sun, or the 10th sign from the ascendant sign. Here is the ascendant sign in a Western chart. Here is in a Vedic chart the ascendant sign. So you can, whichever one you're using, you know, 
You can be using my, by the way, you can use my uh, birth chart calculator. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. At astrolata.com. And I use Vedic type, Vedic type birth chart calculator, but it's the same. Whether you use Western or Vedic is the same. And you uh, just enter the details of the male, or if it's you're the male, you enter your time, place of birth, you know. Um, if you don't know your time of birth, then do not look from the ascendant. Only look from the sun and the position of the sun because for, to know the ascendant, you need to know your time of birth. But the rest of the planets and everything will be correct, you know, because it's not reliant on the time of birth. But for the ascendant, you need to know your time of birth. Enter it. If you don't know the male's time of birth, again, do not check the position of planets from the ascendant. Only from the sun. Only from the sun, you know. And uh, uh, once you calculate it, you have such a chart. Or if you're already familiar with Western astrology, you have this chart. And, uh, um, uh, you know, this is the ascendant. And the important house is this house, the 10th house here or here. You know, the 10th house symbolizes one's actions. One's actions and uh, career, we call it, because most of the actions in the world that we do are to do with our career. And if, uh, that's why it's so important for men to, to know what they want, uh, to, to, you know, for their careers to be more settled, for them to be dateable. It's quite hard to date someone who doesn't have any ambitions or who is very confused and changes their career all the time, you know. And however lovable and great he is, if he has inner dissatisfaction with his actions in the world, with his career, he again will make a woman very unhappy. And the 10th house is also, you know, I said it's one's actions, one's career. And if one's actions are inconsistent, male's actions in particular, if male's actions are inconsistent, this is what will hurt the relationship the most. You know, he can be a very romantic, caring and loving person, but once he gets in a long-term relationship and his actions are inconsistent or contradictory, his career as well, it will reflect on his career, it will definitely reflect on the relationship. Okay. So first thing we have to look at, we take the sun and you check the chart of the male or if you're a male, wherever the sun is, it can be here, it can be here, it can be here. I will put it now, say, here in the fifth house. Oh, my pens are not working. I have to use black one. Okay, I'll put it in a, some bigger house here in the fourth. Say the sun is here. In a western chart, it will be here. And the first difficult position to have is if you have the sun with Rahu in the same sign. It doesn't matter what house it is, you need to have it in the same sign. In a Western chart, it will be showed like that. So if it's the sign here is, say, for instance, Leo, you see the sun in Leo and Rahu. In my chart, it, they will show in this same quadrant. And uh, what it means, this uh, and or from the 10th sign from the sun. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 here. Always count in this direction. You know, the 10 from the sun is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here. So if you have Rahu with the sun or in the 10th from the sun. These both positions are painful, actually even the 10, because the 10 from the sun will show actions, the actions of the male, you know. And uh, the first from the, 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 and the sun itself is his consistency, individuality, constancy. And when Rahu is there, it shows that this person hasn't developed this quality much in a past life. And he, he's just starting to develop them now. So usually these men take much longer to settle. They can start becoming consistent and have more settled individuality and confidence only in their 40s sometimes, you know. So if you see a male like that, you know, don't rush to marry such a person. It might take him a while. He might be changing his goals. He might be changing his uh, purposes very often. He might say one thing and be very sure about it and then break your heart because a few, uh, a few months down the line or a few years down the line, he finds another uh, goal in his life and another purpose and he goes in that direction. Also, Rahu, these people will project a lot of magnetism when the sun is with Rahu, these male. You know, they will look very confident, they will behave very magnetic. They'll, women usually fall crazy for such males, and I've seen it, you know. But it's just a projection. Because what happens with Rahu is you fake it till you make it, and people subconsciously do it. And with the sun, you fake that you have strong, great confidence, that you're a very magnetic authority figure, that often these men can be actually very successful. But within themselves, they do not actually feel this. 
and uh, this can bring to lying, this can bring to cheating in extreme cases, this, this can bring to some certain extremes, you know, I'm not saying every man who has these positions will be like that, but just because their individuality is not settled yet, it takes them to, for quite a while to fall from 42 to 48 sometimes, and they can keep hurting a woman like that. And the sun is also, uh, when you see someone with the sun in Rahu, is often that someone imposed on them individuality early in life, which was not actually their um, own, or which was not their authentic uh, uh, purpose in life. So someone, uh, maybe society, maybe parents, and this person started pursuing that ideal, and uh, uh, there, there were frustrations which later on they changed that direction, you know, or they were told that they have to behave in a certain ways, and, uh, they, but it's inconsistent with who they really are. So it was easy, especially early in age, for someone to impose their own individuality, their own uh, uh, you know, sense of what's purposeful and what goals this person should have. And they often, early in age, they adopt someone else's individuality and they project this magnetic confidence and strength, but it is smoke, smoke, you know. <laughs> and their actions are quite inconsistent because of Rahu, you know, quite inconsistent. They do one day one thing and they really go for it, they're very driven. And also they can be quite self-centered, some with Rahu in particular, because they think that the whole world is an opportunity uh, the kind of opportunistic people and selfish, they think that everyone is there for them and this happens because uh, Rahu wants the person to develop individuality so it drives them to think that everything that is out there is an uh, opportunity for them to develop, <coughs> uh, to manifest their individuality and self-expression so they kind of take advantage of others or they can be some selfishness. Please. Don't be too hard if you have this. Don't, don't stress too much. It sorts out with age, you know. It, it clears up with age and it gets better. Uh, the next difficult position that you can see, and also count this from the ascendant. If you see from the ascendant, from the 10th house, Rahu in the 10th house here. You see, count, start 10 houses, 10 signs from the ascendant. If you see Rahu in that sign, this will give similar inconsistency in action, so this person can be painful to be with here, this will be the 10th house from ascendant. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm quite sure that you have to watch this video a few times to get it, because I will have to be quite fast. But you see, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's similar. Whether it's in the sign of the sun, in the 10th sign from the sun, or in the 10th sign from the ascendant, if you know the time of birth of the person only. If you don't know, you cannot check this out. You cannot check from the ascendant because it will not be correct. Uh, so, say uh, the next difficult planet is if you have Saturn. Saturn in the same sign with the sun. It's a cruel planet here. And it doesn't, and the closer the aspect is, say the sun is at 5 degrees uh, here, say it's in Leo, 5 degrees in Leo, and Saturn is at 7 degrees, it's very strong aspect. If the sun is at 5 degrees, Leo, Saturn is at 29 degrees, it won't be as powerful and dominating, you know, but it will still be there if it's in the same sign. Uh, <clears throat> for here, Saturn in the western chart is showed like that. If Saturn is in the same sign as the sun, in the 10th sign from the sun, sign, not house. Make sure, you know, so those of you who know astrology, count signs. Here is the 10th. Or from the 10th the house from the ascendant. So all of these positions can bring this. Here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Exactly. The 10th house. It's indicated anyway, the houses from the ascendant are indicated by numbers already on the chart. But from the sun, you have to count them. So any of those positions, whatever the sun is, if the sun is here, you check the sign of the sun, you know, the same sign if Saturn is here, or in the 10th from the sun, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If Saturn is here, then whatever, you know. So Saturn is the planet <coughs> which is suppressing, it's which suppressing, constricting. So this will constrict the person's cons uh, confidence. It will uh, restrict the male's ability to express his individuality. It will express, uh, constrict, and it, Saturn gives fears as well and worries. So the person will be very worried about uh, their goals and what they want. They will be fearful somehow to expressing who they really are. And, uh, uh, and, uh, when, uh, and their actions will be somehow always... Um, you know, driven out of fear and worry because Saturn is a planet of fear and worry. So if you have Saturn in the 10th house, Saturn in the 
10 house from the sun or with the sun, these people are kind of fear, these men are fear driven and they can try and compensate where Saturn is people try and compensate. So they become overly ambitious, so they become difficult to live with, you know, or they become overly uh, sour and doer or trying to prove that they're really someone else, that they're, they're trying to prove their ego. And uh, so different people react difficultly. Some will feel very suppressed and like they're smashed out of life and like they're, they're, uh, they're very fearful about themselves and they, they have no confidence in themselves. And Saturn can really bring down the confidence and, uh, and quite negative about their future. And that's painful to be with such a man. A man should drive a woman in a happy relationship. He should give her the confidence. He should give her the inspiration and rather than feeling smashed. Or the other way, a male with Saturn in those positions can react is try and overcompensate and become too much into, you know, too much, showing too much confidence, showing too much bravado and macho-ness, you know. And this can again hurt the relationship a lot, you know. And another painful position is if we have Keto with the sun. That's actually one, that's probably the most painful one, you know. Keto with the tent from the sun. In Western astrology, it's called the south node of the moon. And it's indicated like that. Or in the tent sign from Ascendant. You can also check, those of you who know Western Astrology, you can check also if Ketu is next close to the Midheaven, to the MC, you know what I'm talking about, those of you who know, if it, it will have the same effect. So Ketu being in the 10th sign from the Sun, or in the same sign as the Sun, or in the same, or in the 10th sign from Ascendant, this will bring difficulties. This will, that's really painful to be with such a male because Ketu wants uh, to, in this life, Ketu will give a lot of self-doubts, you know, and the sun is doubt, and Ketu will, they, especially early in age, the man can be very shy, uh, his ego was not validated somehow, you know, he was not made, made to feel like an authority, you know, and, and it's very crushing for such a male. And they have strong doubts about what they want to do in their life. It's not so much fears like in Saturn and suppressing, but it's like inner constant doubt. And uh, it's, it's hidden, you know, their, their individuality and their confidence is somehow hidden because Ketu hides things and uh, it diminishes them. It kind of, it doesn't suppress them, it kind of drains them, more to speak, you know. So a person might feel drained, a male can feel drained with this. And his actions in particular when Ketu is in the 10th sign from the sun or in the 10th house from Ascendant, his actions might be, you know, he'll be someone who would be uh, very ambivalent about his actions. So uh, he might not feel happy in a relationship, but he might stay there and that might uh, really pain the woman or... He might be in a relationship for five years and not taking any action to get married because he's not sure what he really wants. There is ambivalence. Well, with Rahu, they change constantly the actions, which we talked about. But at least when they, they, they decide on something, they go and do it, you know. They, they go and do it. They try it. Well, Ketu doesn't even start when it's in those positions. Like, should I do it? Should I not do it? And, of course, it doesn't have to be so extreme, but you notice such qualities in a person, you know. And uh, this ambivalence drives a woman quite mad and this lack of uh, direction or lack of, um, of uh, how do I say, of, of, and a lack of self-confidence and also Ketu is a perfectionist. So it makes a person really perfectionist and they always are aware, a male with this position is always aware of what he hasn't done right rather than what he has done right. And you can say to this person, oh, you've done a great job, it's fantastic, but he would only be aware of what he did wrong because Ketu makes one perfectionist and very introverted into the self and always, you know, always not dissatisfied. So this brings a lot of dissatisfaction into the life of man, whether it's to do with his career, with his actions that he takes, or within himself dissatisfaction, this will reflect quite strongly on the relationships. And imagine how hard it is to live with a dissatisfied male and who is actually ambivalent about what to do as well. Not only dissatisfied, but doesn't know what exactly to do. The next hard position is Mars. Mars is another cruel planet. Mars in the 10th sign from the sun or in the 10th sign from the ascendant. In Western chart, Mars is indicated like that. And... Uh, 
Mars, again, is a cruel planet. It's not so bad, but it's still somehow harmful, you know, and Mars uh, will be a bit more aggressive. So this can be someone, not necessarily a bully, but someone who tries to show up too much, who is a bravado, who is macho, who is a bit crass and brutal. And uh, in his actions, for instance, the tenth sign from the sun or from the ascendant will show how he approaches his actions. So he'll be a bit stepping on people's toes, on a woman's toe. He'll be a bit of a bossy person as well, you know. And that, that can be painful in relationship, but it's sustainable still. Uh, when it's with the sun, his whole nature is like that. And uh, he's like too uh, driven or too, you know, sometimes tries... Uh, frustrating, you know, frustrating and angered. Mars is planet of anger. So, you know, you, you see that this can be painful as well. Thankfully, we finished the bad planets. Whew. And now we'll go to the good planets. If we have Venus in any of these positions, actually that makes a man very dateable. Venus is a good planet. Venus, uh, Venus in the 10th sign from the sun. Venus in the 10th house, in the 10th sign from the ascendant. Venus in the same sign of the sun, it will give gentleness and kindness of the person. His actions, he'll, he'll, when he takes his actions, he'll be gentle, he'll, feel, he'll be more charming, he'll be kinder in his actions. And Venus is a kind, sweet, uh, loving planet. So when he takes actions, he'll take, it, he'll take more balanced actions, more, you know, mm -hmm. there is softness and charm about Venus. The next good planet is uh, Jupiter. Uh, how is Ju Ju Jupiter? You can have it in the 10th sign from the sun, in the 10th sign from the ascendant, all together with the sun. And Jupiter will give the person, he will feel meaningful about what he wants to do. He will feel meaningful about his uh, career and his actions. He will have purposeful actions. Uh, Jupiter is the planet of uh, meaningful. Jupiter, uh, meaning... Uh, having a meaning in your life, so deep faith and security, feeling very secure uh, and meaningful, you know. And Jupiter is also the planet of tolerance, so he'll have very tolerant activities. Also, he'll feel very, uh, he'll have tolerance in expressing, uh, when expressing his individuality, he will not try to uh, uh, in any way hurt others, just the opposite, he'll be very, you know, uh, all-embracing type of person. This is the kind of man you want, uh, whether Jupiter is in the tent, you know. So he'll have tolerance, his actions will be purposeful, will be confident, and uh, will be kind and gentle as well. And Mercury is the other good planet that you want to see, actually. And Mercury here, in the tent from Sun, or in the tenth sign from Ascendant. You know, you can place them at these positions in the other chart. Mercury is a planet of friendship, of communication, of resolving something uh, intellectually, you know, is the planet of efficiency. So when it's in the, in the tenth house or tenth sign from the sun, this, this person is efficient. It's kind of a clear Mercury's planet of clarity about his actions. It's productive. He's a good manager of his actions. Uh, he likes to discuss his actions. He's not so confused about them. So you see, I always go through the uh, good planets much faster. Uh, because they're not so much fun as the bad planets. We want to see the bad planets usually, you know, <laughs> and judge others and tell them, aha, that's why he was an asshole and <laughs> he left me, but I'm so lucky because he's an asshole anyway. He was never going to make me happy, you know. And, uh, you know, this is a way to judge, but that's just one part of the way to judge for. This is one of the factors. There are three or four different factors rather than this, which only are included in the full compatibility and not compatibility in the full male happiness report for male happiness in relationships. I think it was similar. I'm sending a link below. So if you really want to check the person, because he might have two or three of these positions here, but something else can compensate in the other factors. But anyway, if you see a male with two or three of those with the difficult positions, or a couple, two or three more, then you have to have a, you know, a big mark there, you know. And sometimes, often, a male will have a nice planet in the sign of the sun, a difficult planet in the 10th sign from the sun, and maybe a, another nice planet in the sign or nothing here, you know. So they can be a balance sometimes. Sometimes you see two of the good positions and two of the difficult positions. So it's not, uh, so it's not uh, always uh, so easy to judge, but you can balance it in your mind, you know, you will see. But if you see two or three only difficult positions with no compensating good, well, it's a big, 
it's a big exclamation mark there. Anyway, I hope, uh, oh, I forgot to mention the moon. The moon is not so bad, you know. The moon doesn't affect bad or good, you know. Sometimes the, it's nothing that can make a male undateable, so don't worry. So, yes, I hope you managed to understand this. Give me feedback, what you think, and uh, thank you.